Welcome back, I'm Rob Lang and this is my game Clomper. You live inside a mechanical ladybird called a Clomper, which you can control by laying pipes to power machines with steam. The outside world is a hellscape that you explore from inside the Clomper, picking up resources and completing quests. If that sounds like fun, like and subscribe for more. In the last video, I asked you, the viewers, to choose Clomper's next feature, either inventory or environment. I was all ready to work on inventory, and you said environment. I was surprised, but you were right, so I got stuck in. Clomper uses exploration to give meaning to the pipe puzzling core mechanic. The environment is the place you explore. Navigating the Clomper is not easy. The clomper doesn't move accurately as it depends on you controlling the amount of steam going into each leg and the map is a coarse grain view of the surrounding area but intentionally low on detail. For that you need the periscope which is a limited view and you can't be looking through it at the same time as you're looking at the map. If you're playing alone you will wear a groove in the floor between the map and periscope. The clomper doesn't move quickly, but things can go wrong pretty fast if you're not concentrating. With some pipe layout, experimentation and practice, you can become quite adept at driving the clomper around, so I wanted the environment to offer challenges too. Handcrafting a map is usually the best option. It's quicker to make, easier to add creative flourishes, simpler to code and easier to test. However, I wanted to enjoy playing the game with my friends and I couldn't do that if I knew the map inside out. I chose the Wave Function Collapse algorithm to procedurally generate my environment from a tile set. The tiles I created in Blender as a single model and then cut them up into separate meshes in code. Explanation of the algorithm and the cutting up in the card in the top right. When I first created the algorithm in October 2020, I did the simplest thing that worked. Each tile was made at runtime by taking an empty game object, adding a mesh filter with the tile mesh and a mesh renderer with a standard material. The drawback with making game objects with simple meshes at runtime is that the tiles could be nothing more than just a mesh on a game object. No interactivity, no particles or clever systems, just this. I could have added interesting features programmatically, but that would have been slow and complicated. Instead, I wanted to use the tools of the Unity editor to design the tiles, but still using a single Blender model. This would keep my workflow between Blender and Unity slick. Slick workflows let you iterate, which means to change, export, load and test without lots of button clicking and human error. Don't make humans do a job that machines should do. The solution is to split up the mesh as before, but save the tiles as assets. Then, for each tile mesh asset, it checks to see if there was a prefab, and if there isn't, it makes one. To help separate world creation from the main game, I created a scene with a custom editor script that could call the tile prefab creation code. This scene would never be run, it's only for use in the editor. I added a button to create example environments easily. This is important because I want to make the edits to the tiles and then test by clicking the button repeatedly to see different random environments. I can now edit prefabs just like you would normally. Add a cube, colliders or anything, save and then run the world generator. When I'm happy, I can switch scenes and try them in game. I think that's the lowest friction workflow to make the tiles. If you have a way of doing this better, please let me know in the comments. This wasn't all without struggle. I found it very difficult to use the Unity Editor API, especially when it came to the creation and saving of prefabs. Unity uses a game object for both the instance of a prefab and also for the prefab itself, which is exceptionally confusing. If I have to come into this code a lot in the future, I'm going to wrap the prefab game object in my own type. I've added some example code for saving mesh and prefab into a gist on GitHub. Link in the description. 
I have swathes of notes on how I want the world to work. And although it's important to know what your end result might look like, it's vital to decompose into smaller chunks. I can't make it all at once. I want the tiles to have functionality. I almost think of navigation of Klomper less like a submarine crawling across oceans, but a mechanical ladybug clomping across a landscape that would not be out of place in a platformer. I drew out some platformer tropes and chose to begin with the most obvious, the crevasse. It's just the hole in the ground you have to avoid or jump over. I'm delighted to say that adding the crevasse models was easy. I modelled and imported into prefabs using my new builder. I had set up the clomper using a rigid body with the rotation and Y height fixed. This restricted the physics engine so the clomper was floating above the surface. You may be wondering why I do such a thing. It's because I didn't have to think about friction and collision with the quest objects. The problem with fixing the Y position is that if you introduce holes, then the clomper won't fall into them. So I turned that off and increased the collider so the clomper was sliding across the floor. When two things slide across each other, they are affected by two kinds of friction. Static friction is a force that means you need more force to get you moving. Dynamic friction is a force directly opposite to your direction of travel and is really good for slowing you down, but it doesn't increase with your speed, so you just keep accelerating off. So I switched off friction and continued using drag on the rigid body. Drag is similar to dynamic friction in that it will slow you down, however it increases the faster you're going, so it's great for setting a top speed. The only drawback of drag is that it also happens to falling things, so you need to add more force to compensate for gravity. When the clomper falls into the crevasse, it hits a trigger collider, is reset, gets damaged, and has a smidge of screen shake. The map shows the crevasses as sunken dark hexes which, thanks to Casual Dutchman's feedback on Twitter, fade satisfyingly. Ooh, nice. Thank you for getting to the end of the video. I've got a couple more things to talk about. First of all, the 100 days of game dev Twitter challenge is coming to an end. And I've found it fun, but I don't think it's helped my motivation any because my productivity is based entirely around habits and not sharing with others. It has been fun sharing videos of Clomper over the past few months, but I don't think I'll do it quite as obsessively as I have done. I'll still share to Twitter, but not quite as much. You may have noticed below this video that I have now passed 1,000 subs and I'm delighted. So welcome to all the new subs, thank you for joining us and to all the old ones, hello to you too. I hope it doesn't hurt too much, it's good to see you, you know who you are. To celebrate, I'm going to do a very fitting Q&A video, but with a twist. So, please ask your questions down in the comments below. You can ask me anything about Klomper, or why I'm still doing this, or how I do it, having two kids, a wife and a family. So please do ask below. I'll then take your questions, and I'll filter them through the brutal lens of a 12-year-old boy, my son, Felix. I don't know why I'm putting myself through this, it's a terrible idea, but we're going to do it anyway. So until next time, bye bye. And to demonstrate, I can't really record anything in one take. <laughs> the outtakes. Oh, there's a car. Oh no, it's better than a car. It's the Dustman. Fantastic. When you're trying to record, Let's see if I can do this before they come back. I'm in a cul-de-sac because so they've got to reverse all the way down the road and then come all the way back again. And they're quite loud. They're coming quite quickly. Right, but I'm just, I'm just gonna have to stop and then start again. Thank you for sticking by me. I'm sure the therapy isn't too expensive. There's a car. You know who you are. Why is my people... There's another car. You know who you are. <laughs> I don't know why I'm putting myself through this. It's a terrible idea. But we'll do it anyway. But what? <laughs>
<laughs> oh dear, my neighbours are literally walking past my house like 10 feet over there. Anyway. Oh, there's a car. There would be. <laughs> Don't make myself laugh. That's, that's I'm never going to get recorded. Most of my productivity comes from... Doesn't even sound like me. That was weird. Where did that come from? What's my face all about? What have I done with my children? Are they under the patio? Don't have a patio, so they can't be. Felix, who thinks my face is stupid? Who doesn't really know why I exist and just sees me as a sort of an outlet for buying him Robux? Surprised you're still here. Thank you for getting to the end of the video. I have a couple more things. I never do that. Why did I do that? That's weird. Oh, putting a camera on in front of you just makes you do really weird things.